Okay, the concept of a strategy is an important one in game theory. A strategy is more than just a move. When we talk about PDIP, the players, what they can do, what their information is, what their payoffs are, the do element involves not just what they can move, what they can do in a game, and what they will do, but the idea of a strategy. A strategy, by definition, is a complete specification of all the things that a player would do in whatever circumstance they find themselves in, in the game. So uh, the key point is that it's complete. And now if we look at our simple 2x2 two two game here, what we have is uh, the red player at the initial node. Okay, The red player at the initial node has two moves to invest or to not invest. Okay, Those two moves are also the red player's two strategies to invest at R or to not invest at R, the node R, which is the initial node of the game. The blue player at any particular node, B1 has two moves, at any particular node, B2 has two moves, but actually has four strategies because the blue player finds herself in two particular circumstances in the game, up at B1 after the red player is invested, or at B2 after observing the red player hasn't invested. And the strategy then specifies what she will do at each of those two nodes. Now in the lower part of the graph here, what I've uh, written out is a way of writing a strategy as a list, what the blue player will do at B1, what the blue player will do at B2. So the list has two elements. I've made the list a column, so this first column is one strategy, the second column is another strategy, this third column is another strategy, the fourth column is another strategy. So each column, it's a, it's a list, if you like, uh, and the list indicates what the blue player will do at B1 and at B2 under any particular strategy. So take the first column, it, it's got two E's in it, which means that at B1, if we're just looking at the column, don't need, don't need to look at the upper tree at the column list, it just says at B1 I'll enter, at B2 I'll enter, it's kind of like I'll enter no matter what. Okay. If we go to the opposite extreme, the fourth column as a strategy says at B1 I won't enter, at B1 I won't enter, so I'm not going to enter no matter what. Whereas the two intermediate ones, the two intermediate columns as strategy lists are, as strategies viewed as lists, are I'll enter at B1, not enter at B2. I'll not enter at B1, I'll enter at B2. Now, as I'm moving this pointer over the various columns, you note that the branches in the game tree that are corresponding to this strategy are highlighted. Column 1 has the two highlighted branches in the above tree. Okay, so if I move my mouse over here, they're going to disappear, but it's these two guys here. Okay, so let's go back down. That's highlight there. We move to the second strategy as a list. Notice the change. It's just in the bottom branch, which corresponds, of course, to changing at B2. We're changing from entering to not entering. Then if we move from the third, second column to the third column, the switch is not only at the bottom, but also at the top. Okay, so if you look at the above tree while we're flicking back and forth here, you see that the specification of a strategy specifies two different courses of action here at node B1 and B2 when we're considering the strategies column 2 and column 3. And of course column 4, when we compare it to column 3, is just a difference of 1, which is at the node B2 down here. The choice for that player, the blue player, is changing. So th the idea, remember, of the strategy isn't just what you will do in the game, because if the game is played according to the prediction, then what we're going to do is the red player is going to choose invest, and the blue player is going to choose to not enter. That's what they will do in the game. That's the path of play that's predicted. Okay. But there's also a strategy idea. Okay. The strategy idea is that the blue player will play uh, a particular strategy. The, st the strategy will involve specifying what they will do at 
nodes of the game or decision points that aren't reached along the path of play. Let's go through that again. Here's the predicted path of play, the yellow highlighting. There's another possible path of play that we don't think is going to happen if we analyze this game using the rollback reasoning. But what doesn't happen, what if, what might have happened, is that at node B2, the player does something else. Now, at node B2, the blue player can do E, or they can do not E. They can enter or not enter. And if they don't enter at B1, and we look at two possibilities at node B2, we're dealing with these two possible strategies, column 3, column 4. Okay. So the basic idea about this is that taking actions in a game is one thing, that's a path of play, but predicting strategies is another thing because then you have to think about not only what you expect the player to actually do, but what they might do if they reach other points in the game. And that's part of the reasoning of, of backward induction and uh, equilibrium sort of ideas. You're trying to look at a game from the perspective of, of both players. And while the blue player may know uh, what they're going to do, the red player doesn't know what the blue player is going to do. And so the blue player, the red player is trying to anticipate what the blue player will do in all the circumstances they find themselves in, because that helps the red player predict what the blue player will do and then helps her decide on an optimal choice for himself. Okay.